Hi and welcome again. My name is Dr. Chinana Mukwini and this is the VCs Media Unit. Here with me we are in the beautiful department um, Center for Molecular Biosciences and Technology. I will be talking with um, the director and a few other colleagues in the center. They will be letting us know a lot. I'm Professor Ifoma Irene J. Okay. I'm the current director for this center, the Center for Molecular Biosciences and Biotechnology, CMBB. CMBB. Uh, and with me is a cross section of some of the staff in the in the unit. Uh, Mr. Sam Adiele is the training coordinator of the center. He handles uh, training services. Uh, Mr. Ben Ogeni assists Mrs. Udoka Edward, who handles the research units and then we have a young research assistant, Mr. Joseph Chinedu Obanye. Okay, welcome. So um, uh, first I want to know how new this is, the Center for Molecular Biosciences, let's just call it CMVV. How new are, how new are we in the university and when do, when did we start this center? Okay, the CMBB was established in 2008 uh, during the tenure of Professor Ken Onyedo. Mm -hmm. um, the center, uh, after establishment, uh, this building was actually commissioned in 2011 uh, before Professor Onyedo left. The center is a multidisciplinary center. Uh, it was uh, actually the original idea was to have a place that could serve as uh, a hub for the people involved in life sciences at the molecular level mm -hmm. and also uh, biotechnological research within and outside the university to serve this geopolitical uh, zone. And uh, it was designed to be a center of excellence that will provide core research services, analytical services for scientists. And of course, analytical services related to molecular biology and biotechnology for both the industrial sector within the region. And of course, educational services to promote um, research in molecular sciences and biotechnology. Uh, and that has formed the core of the services we provide as a, a center. So CMBB has done a lot. I know that there are workshops, there are research works that go on here. Can you tell us a little bit about it, especially the research aspect? Okay. Uh, in terms of research, um, we actually provide both research and analytical services that have to do with things like DNA extraction, uh, gel electrophoresis, which we use for gene expression and all that, uh, PCR, yeah. uh, enzyme-linked immunoassay services, uh, lyophilization of samples for people who want to freeze dry. At least I think we are the only center that has a freeze dry in the university. Detection and quantification of metals. We have um, at least we have a flame photometer here. Counting of microbial colonies, uh, community DNA extraction, meta genomics. I'm, not sure, I'm also sure we're the only place that has a minus 80 degrees freezer in the university. So people who want to store their samples at sub zero, this center is available to do all that. Uh, of recent, we have been building our capacity in bioinformatics, which I'm sure you benefited yes. from in the workshops mm -hmm. we have attended, DNA fingerprinting, uh, sequencing analysis uh, for uh, people. Uh, so in terms of research, actually, uh, even though in the center we are involved in research, more of what we do in terms of research is to uh, provide services for researchers okay. uh, who use this place to carry out their uh, molecular-based researches and biotechnological-based researches. So the equipment are available, we provide bench space for them. Okay. Uh, and also the research departments 
assist the researchers to carry out their research. Okay. Uh, some of the researchers may want um, research services carried out for them, but unlike other places where people drop samples and samples are analyzed, yeah. results given, one of the unique things about this center is that the researcher is here yeah. with our researchers. Okay. So, so also acquiring the practical hands-on hands skill yeah. in the course of doing uh, his work. So our analytical services is uh, tied to also research training for researchers who uh, come in here to do uh, their work. Okay. Um, and uh, over the past years, we have actually uh, provided a lot of service for researchers, both within and outside our university. Okay. And I want Mr. Ogin to briefly give us a small overview of um, the kind of researches we have uh, carried out. We have assisted a lot of researchers in their projects, both at the undergraduate post and the postgraduate level. Some of the postgraduate students you assisted, they completed the work and they defended. And some of the studies are already online, they have been published. So basically, in the area of uh, molecular identification, we help them identify the isolates. Okay. So in, in terms of microorganisms, when they isolate microorganisms, they don't know what they are. So we help them to identify those organisms using molecular, using molecular tools. So we identify to the species level. We tell them what the organisms are. Okay. Then also plants. Somebody can get a plant from the field. You don't know what the plant is. You bring the plant here. We can use molecular tools to identify the plants. Okay. So this we have been doing. I've done it for a lot of people, a lot of researchers. Okay. Then also if you parasites, we also help people maybe in the medical field, people in the, especially Kassab, some researchers from Kassab. Mm -hmm. So they give Kassab their blood samples. Animal production. Animal, or animal production. Okay. So when they get blood samples from cows or from goats, from animals, okay. they want to know the parasites that are infecting the animals. Animals. So they, what, all they need to do is to bring the blood, blood samples here. And we help them identify all the parasites in the samples that we have also done for a lot of people. So let me just ask, are there any modern um, technologies, technological techniques, let me use let me use that word, that you use, that you apply, like yeah. you say you do molecular biology, so any modern cutting edge technology that the center is known for? Yes, one of them is the polymerase chain reaction. Okay. The polymerase chain reaction has a wide range of applications. Okay. It's a cutting edge technology. With that, you can amplify a particular gene. We can use it to do what's called DNA barcoding. Okay. DNA barcoding, we get a barcode in a particular organism, and then use it to identify all the organisms in that particular uh, organism that belong to that particular family. Okay. So it's a continuous technology. Then another one is the sequencing. Sequencing. So when we sequence, the next thing is to analyze using bioinformatic tools. So another cutting technology that we offer here, bioinformatics. Bio so I've mentioned we have a polymerase chain reaction, mm -hmm. sequencing, and then bioinformatics. Mm -hmm. So these are things that these are tools that we use to work generally. So when when postgraduate are these for postgraduate students or undergraduate students? Mainly for postgraduate students. Postgraduate students. Well. Mm -hmm. A lot depends on the person's research design. Yeah. Uh, you, you can find somebody who will incorporate these things into <coughs> some undergraduates, uh, but more of postgraduate students. But apart from the work we do for people who are working towards degrees, the center is also involved with researchers in the university. Uh, a number of our uh, staff who get grants, this center has yeah. assisted them to do their analysis okay. uh, as well as uh, and of course uh, like you know we offer a lot of training services we offer trainings to undergraduates mm -hmm. uh, this center services all the departments in Colnas mm -hmm. uh, most of them are involved in some 300 level 400 level mm -hmm. practicals mm -hmm. that we offer here okay. uh, helping them 
uh, especially microbiology. Microbiology does practicals at both 300 and 400 level here. Mm -hmm. Biochemistry, mm -hmm. uh, PSB come mainly in their 400 uh, level and uh, they go more for DNA extraction and gel, electrophoresis training. Uh, for the biochemistry students last year, I think we, we took them through PCR. They, they were able to do up to polymerase chain uh, reaction. And then, of course, we run workshops. Uh, the center has uh, conducted annual workshops on basic molecular biology Techniques. techniques. Uh, and bioinformatics uh, and we have trained many many scientists across the geopolitical zone and beyond we, we have people coming from more than 10 to 15 different universities just to, to, to attend our workshops uh, and these workshops are certificated yeah. so uh, in addition to the training they add a feather to their uh, caps um, uh, recently, uh, we also uh, ran a workshop that was not just the basic uh, uh, molecular training. Uh, we ran a workshop on uh, antibiotic, uh, antimicrobial resistance, nice. uh, which was uh, sponsored by the African Research Excellence uh, Fund. And uh, we mm. had uh, uh, people joining us from another university in the UK. I'll be talking about that later when I discuss uh, okay. collaborations. Mm -hmm. uh, but apart from that, we also offer educational services, actually, uh, to secondary schools. Secondary schools, nice. Yes. The idea is that as a Center for Molecular Biosciences and Biotechnology, we feel that part of our outreach is to get his, uh, students early enough introduced to the subject of uh, molecular biosciences and biotechnology. And it may interest you that um, not too long ago, mm -hmm. we were at Federal Government Girls College, Umahe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we demonstrated the basic DNA extraction for the secondary school students mm -hmm. and had them do some small hands-on wow. uh, extracting DNA from banana using uh, a, a long protocol and they were excited and uh, that tells you these students who ordinarily will be looking at biotechnology as a rocket science mm -hmm. by that outreach we have done sees that these things are uh, doable and uh, will pick some interest in studying the molecular biosciences and biotechnology um, and of course, uh, like I said, the training coordinator is here and would uh, maybe talk a little bit about the trainings we have. We currently have up to 10 industrial training students okay. in the center now. And that's uh, a that's, social that's service we are offering by admitting them and getting them trained. So the training coordinator, Mr. Sam Aladiello, will throw a little light on uh, average attendances at these workshops and uh, what we have achieved through the workshops over the years. Thank you very much. Mr. Samuel. Yeah, thank you, Ma. Yeah. Um, just as my director has said, uh, we've organized several trainings and workshops. Actually, every year we make it at the product that is each quarter we try to organize a workshop mm -hmm. where we have participants that come from different universities within the, this country. Uh, we just finished one um, recent where she just mentioned that was sponsored by the RF, Africa Research, you know, uh, nice. before, you know uh, in collaboration with Not Trend Nottingham University UK. Mm -hmm. We had resource uh, persons from UK, that university, who helped us to train our participants. Some of them participated online and we also had uh, one of them who was on site here. That is that training workshop we just finished. And like she said, most of these trainings are certificated. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that people who come here have something to go home with, you know, so they can add it to their profile. Yeah. And not only that, we also uh, make sure that our undergraduates who are involved in molecular biology and biotechnology courses mm -hmm. in their various environments, especially the College of Natural Sciences here 
uh, we make sure that they come here to have experience, basic experience, we call them the basic molecular biology techniques. Okay. That means that they ought to know mm -hmm. before they go further in any molecular biology work. So they come here and mostly we take them through DNA extraction. And they all appreciate it. They know how to extract DNA from any biological sample. You know, maybe from blood or plants, even from microorganisms. So we take them through there. We also take them through to do some, you know, uh, how to uh, you know, identify antibiotic resistance strains of some microorganisms. That one we mostly do that for the microbiology students. Yeah, but every department at least, they go through uh, DNA extraction and after that they all will also take them through the agarose genetophoresis okay. where we now teach them how to um, you know, identify if they extracted DNA from their processes or not. Like also she mentioned the secondary school uh, education services were under, you know, um, two or three years ago we had a symposium where we invited several secondary schools. Uh, they came here, we had a symposium where we introduced this science of biotechnology to them. And they appreciated it because most of the several students are not aware of this lucrative uh, course called biotechnology. So we introduced it to them and showed the prospects that are involved uh, in, in, in biotechnology and they all appreciated it. And I remember after the symposium, mm -hmm. one or two students that I know from our affiliate secondary school here had to apply for uh, plant science and biotechnology <laughs> and they got admission. Oh, nice. and yes, because I... the, the, the lecture, the information we gave them there intrigued them and they wanted to study more about biotechnology. Yeah, I so, actually did my, I actually was part of the workshop last, that's the one before this last one. Okay. And it was really nice. It All was right. hands-on training. Yes. And I can say that it also influenced my master's thesis. So, okay. yes, I am a beneficiary of the <laughs> CMBB Center. So, um, Mark, is there any notable research work that has come out from the CMBB um, as a whole that has made tremendous effect or impacts in our society? Yes, okay. even though we okay. will not lay claims to them because there are researchers who are involved in. Okay. Okay. There are people's researchers who are involved in, so they mm -hmm. will make uh, their claims. Uh, but essentially, the, the this center has been involved with many of our researchers, even in VET there. Yes. Uh, I know that um, the work that... Uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Kongpo is doing. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 a number of them. Okay. Also, I wanted to ask um, what level, I know that labs are grouped by their biosecurity levels. What kind of, um, what type of labs do we have here in the same Yes, room? The, in fact, the center is, uh, we have about four main labs here. Okay. We have a central teaching lab, central, okay. uh, which is probably where you spend most of your time during the workshop yeah. in. Okay. Uh, that lab is a peep to the minus 80 degrees freezer. Okay. Uh, that's where we have our colony counters, uh, gel electrophoresis system, okay. uh, UV transluminator, a flame photometer, and a number of other equipment. Uh, it also has a number of refrigerated ultra Okay. Centrifuges. And uh, then we have the two we call the molecular labs, uh, where uh, other equipments are housed. The human chamber. Uh, yes. We have the, then we have a biosafety level two okay. within the center um, that the center houses. We also have a laminar flow cabinet. Okay. Uh, our tissue culture lab is yet to really take off okay. uh, because to run the tissue culture lab you will really need to have uninterrupted power i was about so to that, ask challenges which uh, <laughs> is not yet here okay uh, as a center we have both the conventional and the real time uh, PCR, okay. even though the challenges we will not discuss in this video <laughs> uh, so, yeah. 
Then, like I said, we have the lyophilizer also in the central teaching lab. We have a flowometer and a number of other equipment that you will meet as we go through this. Uh, like I said, you know, the center is a research center, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's more of a research training. service center, research okay. training okay. and service center okay. than uh, it's not a research institute okay. where you say outcomes. That yes. is not a research institute with a mandate for a specific thing, okay. but it's a research service and research and training So it's diversified for yes. whoever wants to yes. use the equipment can yes. just come. Speaking of which, I think during the COVID season, people were saying <laughs> that yes. since we have PCR, we yes, could actually yes. make vaccines. Yes, during the COVID season, I did write to NCDC. Okay. We reached out okay. and they came. Okay. NCDC was here, yeah, evaluated us, okay. uh, and almost 90% were ready. Okay. However, they were a little worried about biosafety. Uh, bio uh, because of the, students. Uh, biosafety and the fact that this place is not isolated and that the labs they could use are not isolated. Uh, in fact, we had several meetings. Uh, with them. In fact, the, the scientists here, about well, two of them, mm -hmm. joined in the trainings mm -hmm. NCDC had at Amachara yeah. in, uh, in preparation for deployment. But eventually, the components they asked the state to provide. Dang. We are still waiting for it okay. to ensure that they could deploy. So, so that means we can actually make vaccines here. How about diagnosis? What kind of diagnosis can we make in the labs here? Can we do things like TB diagnosis? No, for TB now you require biosafety level three. Okay, okay. That's the standard. That's why Amacha is the only this place thing. offering TB okay. diagnosis. We have level two. Okay. Uh, so what kind uh, of things can we do in the level two lab? Uh, well, the level two lab, we can do a lot in terms of uh, handling organisms that are probably not highly okay. virulent. Okay. Uh, it depends on what the researcher is looking for. Okay. Okay, great. But the current vice chancellor is doing his best to uh, update our equipment. He's, he's brought in more equipment, uh, even though many of them are yet to be installed because they say it's tied to the building, the extension that is oh, coming okay. behind us. So, I, you've been talking about collaborations. I just want to know what, if you could just list a few of the international, national, okay. inter-college okay. <laughs> collaborations. Okay, so starting at the university level, okay. I think we have a collaboration with virtually all the departments involved in molecular biosciences because if we are offering training yeah. to their students, it's already a collaboration. collaboration. Uh, then since 2008, we have had a good collaboration with the Biosciences Unit of the National Root Crops Research Institute. Okay. Uh, and that collaboration has been quite beneficial. Um, also, we have uh, a collaboration with the Utah State University, Logan. Okay. Uh, that's a collaboration we need to further reactivate. Okay. Actually, as the pioneer director of this place, I was sent there okay. uh, for a training and at that time this university trained three scientists in preparation for the takeoff of this place. Okay. Uh, Dr. Alex Awurum of Blessed Memory okay. and then uh, Professor Mark Kaloke. Okay. The three of us uh, were trained at the Center for Integrated Biosciences. Uh, of the Utah State University, Logan, and a, 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 a DVC then subsequently traveled to sign the active uh, MOE. Uh, MOE. Uh, also, the Applied Biotech Institute has had an active collaboration okay. and has helped this center in, at the beginning with uh, trainings trainings and uh, I believe that is still on. Okay. We also have an active collaboration with NABDA, NABDA. National 
agency for biotechnology. As development. he should. <laughs> uh, so as should be expected, biotechnology development agency. So uh, these collaborations are there. And then, of course, we are working out mm -hmm. a longer term collaboration with the Nottingham Trent University UK. Okay. That we just uh, had Hardy. a joint workshop with. Uh, even though an MOU has not been signed, we have an agreement okay. with that unit for online uh, training okay. service deliveries. Okay. And, uh, so that is in the pipeline and we are working on others. So what about grants? Does, does the center, um, is, are, are you people capable of obtaining grants? Uh, well, yes, we just told you that the last training we had was sponsored by the African Research Excellence Fund. Okay. And uh, we are working towards uh, getting, more. getting more grants. Uh, I, in the past, I had, uh, in that 2008, uh, when I was here, we had worked with uh, the National Root Crops Research Institute for the Competitive Agricultural Research Grant. Okay. Uh, and we're also working towards in future to be able to assess the grants offered by the ICGEB, okay. the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. So uh, even though those ones have not matured, there are things we are working on. Our idea actually is to be able to be self-sustaining with time through uh, the analytical services we offer uh, and the bench for fee services we offer and uh, to be able to attract competitive grants that can enable us train our scientists and also run the center. Uh, all these young people, as you can see, do not have PhDs. And uh, we're hoping that these collaborations that we are working on can offer them uh, bench spaces or even full grants to be trained towards their being. So I just want to ask randomly, what is it like working in the Center for Molecular Bioscience and Technology Lab for everybody? Is it very busy? Is it laid back? I will have them speak <laughs> there because if I say it, uh, it's the opportunity to say it. Because, you know, Nigeria has not really caught up with molecular biosciences yet. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what's the traffic like, what's the research work like? Are there a lot of people coming? I think everybody can say something. No, I would say the traffic is a bit low, lower than what we expect. Uh, we used to have a higher traffic pre COVID. COVID. Okay. Uh, post COVID, the traffic has uh, okay. reduced considerably, but it's picking up right now. I think we have up to four researchers who are. The major problem has been finance. Yes. When you tell them the, the cost, cost yes. okay. they tell you that they cannot afford it. And Especially that, that will be last you hear from them. Mm. So that's our major challenge. Uh, if not, there should have been a lot of, a lot of uh, there, there are interests, but um, the more most of the people move more towards the west. Okay. To, uh, so the university is not subsidizing research works down here. Are you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the individual researchers have their research, and it's their duty to secure grants. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their work. Yeah. Our services are not free because uh, molecular biochemicals, uh, molecular chemicals are not uh, cheap. The reagents are very expensive. So, so Ma, yeah. just, just to cap this off, you've been a molecular bioscience scientist for I mean, you're a professor, so I'm it's been... I'm primarily a biochemist, biochemist with interest in molecular Okay. Biology. Uh, so uh, I'm here as a director. Okay. Uh, the directorate can move to any college. That's why I said this is a multidisciplinary center. Okay. The immediate past director was a uh, was a microbiologist. Okay. Uh, the director that handed over to him was a plant science 
Disciplinary multidisciplinary center yeah. that offers. Uh, so you, you, we can't pin and say this person is uh, like now he is from plant science and biotechnology. Okay. He studied biotechnology. Okay. He studied the zoology and environmental biology. We have in our midst a number of you know, scientists who are microbiologists. So. So that means this place it's not is like a melting point yeah, for the life sciences. For, for sciences. Yes. So what will you say to aspiring um, applicants, people that want to come and do some kind of projects here? I mean, you've talked about gene extraction, you've talked about things that people might want to come and do. What will you say to them? The, our services are available okay. and uh, we are here to serve them. Okay. Our scientists are willing okay. and uh, able. Okay. Even though, like I said, uh, they will need training, retraining, and more training okay. if if this center is to be at its best. Okay. Uh, in in terms of sponsorship of trainings, the university must, uh, as a matter of necessity, consider uh, prioritizing their acquisition of uh, cutting edge more because science keeps moving. Mm -hmm. And the only way to catch up is that by the mm -hmm. time okay. it's once a new thing is out, mm -hmm. your scientists in the front line should also uh, acquire knowledge. those uh, skills. And I've tried to stress that uh, from time to time when making recommendations to them. It's not just about them. It's about they're acquiring these skills to be able to update. That's why, for instance, we had to link up to okay. run that AMR workshop. Yeah. Uh, we we did. Okay. The, the idea was they got trained, up, updated their skills with yeah. the collaboration we had with Nottingham yeah. Trends, and now they can also Teach. transfer those uh, yeah, skills. Okay. okay. Well, uh, recently the issue of uh, paternity has become vogue, where people uh, contest. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> that they own just, uh, yeah. whether the child is it's theirs or not. Well, we can offer services to confirm uh, the paternity. So I just have uh, to ask: Is it affordable? Including maternity tests, <laughs> not the paternity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because hospitals are exchanging sure, babies. Yes, yes. Swap, yes. Swap, oh, all we will need is my DNA. You want yeah. another child? Yes, uh, well. Uh, give it to you, and then. Uh, so you've heard it. You can do your forensics here. You can do your postgraduate research, undergraduate mm -hmm. research. You can even send your um, secondary school uh, kids okay. to come and have a feel of what biotechnology is. Yes. And I mean, <laughs> who wouldn't want to work with these jolly good fellows? Okay. So um, we are the VCs units. So obviously the VC will be watching this. You have any last words for the VC? I really want to thank uh, Professor Made BBC or Foyewe for the interest he has shown in this center. I must confess that we didn't have to converse for it. Right from when he came on, uh, he showed interest. He visited this center. He saw our challenges, and to within the limits of the problems of Nigeria, yeah. he's been trying to address that challenges, and uh, we are also hoping. Yeah. that his, result, his efforts will yield the expected uh, results and we pledge to give our best and um, it may interest you that all the workshops you have run you have not had to collect money from the university wow self-funded yes all our workshops so far including the outreaches the one, yes apart from the one that RF sponsored yeah. have been uh, funded from the little resources generated from within here and that means that if our capacity is improved, is improved then improved. we can also do better uh, more and uh, in the past uh, we, we have also been able to remit some small money to the university which is great which is <laughs> Thank you. okay so, any last words from everybody? Nobody else? has said nothing. He's the youngest. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what is it like being young and in micro, micro, MC, 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 MC. Well, it's been 
quite an experience. I mean, I wore my biotechnology um, association shirt out one day and a young man stopped me on the road and he said, sir, what does this mean, biotechnology? I said, biotechnology is the fusion of biology and technology in order to answer um, pressing questions that are relevant in the technology sphere and in the biology sphere. And I invited him to come to the center to come and see what we do. We have uh, DNA extraction services that we provide, we have PCR services that we provide, electroforestry services that we provide. And you, you should come and see that. And so far, so good. A lot of young people have been indicating interest. Yes. In fact, whenever they come here, mm -hmm. they live very excited and they want to come again to mm -hmm. benefit from the services that this center renders. So, yes. So uh, it's, it's, it's a lovely place to be there. It is. <laughs> wonderful. But let me add that uh, this has really sparked up interest of most of our undergraduates to yeah. do industrial training here. Okay. Like in this last, we just uh, took um, 10 IT students now, oh. and we had a total of uh, I think 80, 80 applicants oh. that applied. So usually we give them a test. I yeah, can so take the best test. We have to, we the numbers are increasing, increasing every, every year. year because each badge that lives here, yes, they say HSC the that. Yes. yes, they go with good news. Yes. You know, I do that sparks up the interest of the other ones. Who are coming up behind and they don't want to be here. Which is, which is, I mean, the world is moving to yes. bio and technology. I like the explanation. Yes. We're looking forward to when we can actually offer forensic services forensic. because we have that capacity. Yeah. Uh, forensic services to our police department and uh, related bodies. So now with uh, our, with our um, level two lab, we can offer forensic services. Sure, sure. Wow, that's, that's a discovery. <laughs> but part of what you need for forensic services really is uh, DNA. You, once you extract the DNA, DNA and you can run the PCR, oh, sure. you can sequence yeah. and you can characterize the <laughs> <laughs> So they need to hear that. Yes, they need to. So once they have any small evidence from which we can extract DNA, yeah. we can oh, uh, nice. be able nice. to offer that service. That's nice. So, so um, it was really nice having this conversation with you, Ma. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, again, uh, my name is Dr. Shino Mukweni, and this is the VCs Media Unit. Until next time. Bye-bye.